Hi everyone, Sal Khan here from Khan Academy and I just wanted to welcome you to the Tech and Learning Leadership Summit in Philadelphia. As I'm sure many of y'all are already thinking about, uh, there's a lot of artificial intelligence in the air and I can't imagine a better group to, especially as you go into ISTE, to start thinking about this with. I talked to a senior writer at Tech and Learning, Eric Ofgang, uh, fairly recently about how we see artificial intelligence uh, transforming the nature of education and really reinforcing some of these ideas that all of us at Khan Academy have believed from the beginning, uh, that technology isn't there in some way to replace teachers, but it's there to provide a teaching assistant, that it's all about it's not about the technology, it's about the pedagogy. And the pedagogy that I think all of us believe in is differentiation, having more personalization, making sure that students have the opportunity to address their unfinished learning. And this is obviously something that all of us at Khan Academy have been working on for over a decade now. Uh, and we believe that this next generation of generative AI has the opportunity to accelerate it. Just to give you all a little bit of background on Khan Academy and how we are leveraging generative AI, some of y'all might have already caught wind of Conmigo. I gave a TED talk about it a few months ago. But we started working with OpenAI uh, almost exactly a year ago. We were under a non-disclosure agreement. Uh, we started to see what's possible with GPT-4. They wanted to work with us because they, we, they said, look, this technology is going to be very powerful. We want to launch GPT-4 with a small number of partners in social positive use cases. And they saw education as one of those social positive use cases, which we agree. And they said, Khan Academy, y'all are not for profit. People trust you. You are already working with school districts. Uh, you're already uh, uh, focused on, on all of the right things from an ethics point of view and from an efficacy point of view. Uh, let's see if there's a there there. And so we started working with them and we immediately saw the potential if we could mitigate some of the risks around student cheating, around uh, privacy, around potentially using the AI in harmful ways, um, if we could mitigate those. And as we know, things like AI hallucination and getting uh, even sometimes simple math incorrect. If we, if we could mitigate those types of risk, that there's huge potential to get closer to the holy grail of personalization where we could really start to cater to students, unblock them, be an artificially intelligent personal tutor, uh, which doesn't just unblock them in their math or their science or their, or their humanities, but can connect things. Uh, why is this relevant? And do things that might have seemed like science fiction a, a year ago, like talk to a historic character, talk to a fictional character, uh, be able to get not have your essay written for you, but get feedback on your essay. And so we went down that journey uh, with OpenAI. Uh, and I remember when uh, ChatGPT came out, and to be clear, ChatGPT was not based on GPT-4, it was based on GPT-3.5, which had, had way more issues, I would say, uh, than GPT-4. Uh, I think that's when it came on, on everyone else's radar, uh, where it was clear that this could be used for cheating, this could be used for misinformation, uh, it could be used to undermine a student's education. And I think a lot of folks said, okay, we don't want to have anything to do with, with chat GPT in, in education. But at the same time, we know that this is that these types of tools, not necessarily chat GPT, are already being used in the workplace. We know that 40% of teachers are already using chat GPT, so we can't pretend like it's not already happening on its own. And when that was happening, we were still under NDA. We didn't launch until March uh, of 2023 uh, when the GPT-4 launch came. We were chomping at the bit because we said, hold on, education world. Uh, we, we, get your, we get your concerns around cheating. We get your concerns around privacy. We get your concerns about some ways to have oversight, about having pedagogically sound uses of AI. And we were feverishly working on it. And so when we were able to launch in March, and we're now piloting in real school districts, and we're going to be piloting with many more this coming fall, maybe some of y'all, we hope to show that not only uh, can those risks be mitigated, but this could be the biggest gift, the biggest boon to education uh, in any of our lifetimes, um, especially when it's anchored on the factual content from a, a trusted source like Khan Academy, when we've, we've done several layers above and beyond what GPT-4 offers, uh, to make sure that the math is more correct, to make sure that it, it keeps anchoring students back on their core coursework and uh, doesn't allow them to cheat. It'll do activities with the student, but not for the student. And equally important, it can act as a teaching assistant. Uh, already on Conmigo, teachers are using it to develop lesson plans, create rubrics, 
get reports on what their students are up to, both in traditional Khan Academy activities and on AI-based activities. Uh, be able to, in, in short order, we're going to be able to use the AI to assign and to communicate between teachers and students, uh, and hopefully take a lot of uh, the, the work that's not student-facing off of a teacher so that they have more time for themselves. We know that teacher burnout is at an all-time high and also for their students. So as you as you continue to engage at the Tech and Learning Summit and uh, you attend ISTE, I encourage you to think about Conmigo. I genuinely think that what we are uh, trying to do at Khan Academy in conjunction with other partners, we're working with OpenAI, but we're, we're also working with other parties uh, like Google and others to think about what is the best way to leverage artificial intelligence in an education environment. And the best advice I can tell you is to just try it out. Try out Conmigo, see how you can use it as a teacher. Have some of your teachers try it out. Have folks in your family use it as students. You use it as a student and, and get familiar with the activities. And I think um, there's a lot of questions to answer, but as you start to play with it, you'll start to learn that there's, I think, even more uh, to get excited about. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye.